In your son, Emmanuel, to Christ, and we pray and praise you for all these things. I say, Hallelujah. 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 Come on, give him a shout out. Hallelujah, saints. Again, we're happy and excited for your presence. To all of those that's with us, our friends, we thank God for you. Saints, we've been dealing with this since 11 read. The Spirit of God in its many different forms as it relates to the Word of God. We've dealt from the evil angels, the evil spirits, the evil ghosts. We showed you that they didn't have a kingdom. They didn't have a domain or any of those things. Uh, we showed you where they was at. Peter said that they, he, they was cast out. And they were cast out to hell. We even learned out that through that, that hell is a state of condition. And these are the guys that bring these conditions into the lives of humanity. Saints, we talked about uh, 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 the spirit of God, uh, the sons of God that are spirits. Those are the, that are spirit, and, and then we are looking to be made spirit being. We've dealt with all of those things. We come back in these last three, two or three classes, we've talked about the spirit of God, the one that brings the truth. We've talked about how angels are spirit, how they are ministering spirit, serving spirit. All of the one, we even went back and read it last night. All of the, when Christ comes, he's going to have all of the holy angels with him. We looked at it in Hebrews last night to where the Bible said that they are ministering spirit, serving spirit, sent forth to minister to those who are or shall be the heir of salvation. We looked at it and we talked about the angel of God's presence, the one that stands in the presence of God for our behalf. We looked at it and we talked about the ones that bring the truth. We even said that if everybody was filled with God's spirit according to the word, that we would all be on one accord. We would have all the different denominations and organizations that we have. We wouldn't have the fighting that this one is right, this one is right. My church is right. God only has one true church. And it ain't like what a lot of people say in the world. I'm not going to get into all of that about what he told Peter upon which rock he be. If you don't have understanding of what this brother talked about a minute ago, you don't have anything at all, not in relation to Christ. We talked about how God the Father himself, he and Christ were God. The spirit beings in this world were God the Father, the Son, and the angels. We talked about living souls, which were man and beast. We said that, once again, angels are spirits. All of the holy ones that didn't get kicked out with God. We talked about how the spirit of God comes in many different ways. Four. And we broke it down and we dealt with each one. So today we're going to deal with, I told you, one of the things that we were going to talk about in this printed across the top of your paper. And that we're going to deal with this over the next three weeks. The Spirit of God that fills you. Now I went ahead and because of me, because I was going to make your mind think, where is it? What is it? And where is it? We have it written on our, our, our board over here. If the Holy Spirit is housed, if it's living in this tabernacle, in this tent, or if it's in this body, what part of the body do it dwell in? Is it in my feet to make me walk? Is it in my hand to make me move? Is it in my ears to be able to make me hear? What part is it in my eyes to make me see? Do I have a spirit in every member of my body? Because I've heard in the church, you have different spirit. And I've been going to say this in some churches, you got a hoe spirit, you got a drinking spirit, you got this kind of spirit. Jesus. Where do these things come from, saints? We need to.
need to understand it. If the, if the spirit of God is housed in this body, where would it be? It's for one part of the body that directs the whole body. You don't have to go to the doctor to get that. If the spirit of God is housed in this body, where is it at Bible study group of Israel? In the mind, behind the brain, behind the forehead, the very place where God is going to seal you in. What's behind that? From here, everything stops. Even, with, even on the evil side. When the evil angels come, they always attack your mind. They don't attack your lower nature. They attack your mind. Nobody have ever committed any sin or did any wrong without the thought first entering into your mind. Who put that on your mind? Now we talk about things that God have not given us. We talk about He didn't give us He didn't give us the spirit of fear. So why do we have these things housed in our body on our mind? Where did it come from, saints? Some evil spirit or evil angel or evil ghost had to entice your mind, according to Paul, to make us do whatever it is we've done. This is the way these things come. Like if it come that way by evil, if he come in and entices your mind and have you to do that. There was a lady that did a tragic thing by putting a child in the oven. She said her mind told her to do that. I'm looking, I'm listening at stories to where people would, would uh, be done did uh, uh, troublesome things. And the first thing that they replied, my mind. Who put that on your mind? It wasn't your finger that shot the person. Your finger didn't tell you to shoot that, take that gun and shoot that person and kill her. It started in your mind. This is why God told us, uh, according to Paul in, 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 in Corinthians and Tim, casting down imagination. Yes. Amen. And every high thing that exalted itself to the knowledge of God and bringing every thought. Where are your thoughts at? Once again, it don't make no difference, David, about the woman being on uh, the top of the house and she wasn't uh, enrolled with clothes. The thought didn't enter through the lower part of your body. The thought entered into his mind, casting down imagination. And everything that brings itself against her, and this is what Cedric said a minute ago. And see, this, this is the spirit. Everything that brings itself against the word or the knowledge of God. What is the knowledge of God? It's simply the word of God, saints. We have to know how this thing is used. Once again, as I said last night, if everybody was filled with the spirit the way God said, we would all be on one accord. And it marvels me. I told a brother, a few months ago. And this is even to the saints. We're different with the state now. But how are they going to be? Because see, when you get in that world tomorrow, everybody's going to have to be on one of the saints. Everybody. It's like I said last night. I know what Cedric is going to be doing 10 Sabbaths from now. I don't have to ask him. I don't have to ask him a uh, Friday evening where you're going to be at, what you're going to be doing. He's in preparation on Friday evening for the Sabbath. Everybody is going to have that same mindset. Yes. Won't be all this confusion and stuff like that no more. All by the same. Let's get into this, saints. Matthew chapter 5, we're going to deal with this. This is even with this one thing here. The spirit that fills you. What we're going to deal with the part that we're going to deal with today is the word. I'm going to show you how it's done and the importance of doing it. I'm going to show you the importance of being taught the word of God. We looked at it last night with Philip. 
if Philip had to have the Holy Spirit of the Holy Ghost, and we talked about that again, I don't use the word ghost as much. If they do, it's only in teaching. John 4 said that God is a spirit, and that in worship him must do it in and according to truth. Now, once again, I say, and especially to those that's viewing, listening at us, this is one part of the message. I'm not saying this is the only way that you feel. This is the one that we're dealing with today. Because when we finish, I want the Bible study group to every any time you come across the word spirit, just like you come across the word law and Paul's writing, we already know to ask the question. Yes. Yeah. What law is he talking about? One minute you find Paul saying that the law have been fulfilled and done away with. And then in the same chapter you find Paul saying the law is holy, the law is just, and the law is good. And then you tell him, and he'll tell you in the same chapter, we're not under the law. We're under the grace. grace yeah. We know and we've been taught that when we read yeah. any of Paul's writing, we always ask the question. What law is he talking about? For there is a law that's not preached in most churches. And if it was, it would clear up so many simple things. And it could get our people back on one accord. The one that we're going to talk about today, saints, is being filled with his word. Even how God, this is something that God has done. Even through the by and by the hand of the angel. Peter had to go that way. Ezekiel had to go that way. John had to go that way. Jeremiah had to go that way. And according to Peter, all of the rest of the prophets of old had to be like this way. Now, we're going to get into the minds and the thoughts and the other parts of this thing here as we go on into it. We're going to start this in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Matthew 5, 6 is just one verse. We're going to deal with. Once again, uh, we're going to deal with the word being filled with his word. And it's from that sense. We looked at it in John last night. It said that when, the, when he, the spirit of truth come, he's going to teach you all things. And then bring back to your remembrance all things whatsoever you read. And if you hadn't read anything, what can it bring back to your remembrance? If you hadn't read anything, what can it teach you? Let's look at this, Andrew. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Read that. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Anybody that's hungering and thirst for righteousness, Hallelujah. they yes. shall be filled. The question is, what are we going to be filled with? Let's look at over in John. And John, and we're going to get this when we get into John chapter 6. Uh, but I look at John chapter 7. What is it? He didn't hunger and thirst for righteousness. And even with that saying, I'm not going to get into it, but even with righteousness, when we find out what righteousness is according to the law, the Bible talked about it in Luke chapter 1, how Zechariah was righteous and blameless for God, by God. And I'm going to give you the answer to it. You go back and look it up. But he talked about because he was walking in the ordinance of God, keeping the commands of God. That's the righteousness of God. John chapter 7, verse 37, he's going to read. Look at that. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Now, now he just told you in, in uh, 5 of Matthew, you are going to be filled. The question was, what, whether you're going to be filled with. Now he's talking about if any man thirst. We're going to look at this in Isaiah 55 and I close it. If any man thirst, come to me and he's going to be filled. That's what he said. Read on. He that believeth on me, mm -hmm. as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers this is of living water. To have say. He that believes on him, after you have been filled, out of his belly is going to flow rivers of living water. Now he's going to be able to prophesy. 
And I'm not talking about, I'm talking about prophesying like the scripture said prophesy. When everybody else was filled with the scripture spirit, according to what we're talking about today, they prophesied. Oh, in other words, they taught the word, and when if God did give them a rhema, they began with even to speak that. But even with that, say, prophecy is nothing, anything that's ever revelatory to you. Not anything that's revealing or uh, anything like uh, revealing to you. All that any woman or man of God that is a prophet or a prophetess, all they can do is confirm what God have already said. It shouldn't be a mystery to you. Somebody come up and tell you God's going to give you a new house, car, money, or whatever it is. All they can do is confirm what God has already said. And see, this is why we're so messed up in the church. We're so anxious and waiting around begging and waiting for God to do things in our life. And as soon as somebody come up looking for an offering or whatever they're looking for, tell you that and you're ready to throw money at their feet and do all kinds. You don't have to, as I told you last night, you don't have to do that thing. Just walking in this way and doing the thing that God have called a day and said to do, that would bless you more than anything. Even as I was talking last night. Don't, you don't need education to be blessed by God according to this thing. I'm going to show you that a little bit later. Read on. But this spake he of the spirit. This spake he of what? Of the spirit. He was talking about the spirit. I'm going to show you in what way and which form he was talking about. How rivers of water are going to flow from his belly. Read that. Which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. I told you last night, according to John, it hadn't been given. He said, is it expedient to you that I go away? If I don't go, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, he just read, can't come to you. But if I go, he will come to you. And this is the thing that most people miss. Again. During the three and a half years of Christ's ministry, you didn't see angelic provision like you see it presently now and before that time and after that time. Yeah. This was the spirit that he was talking about that's going to go. Hey, God said that it had been with you ever since you come out of Egypt. Jesus. And he was going to allow it to come back and do these same things. You finished with that? Mm -hmm. Let's look at this in John 6. Flip back one page, John 6. And he's going to start reading in 51. And I'm going to show you what he's talking about in this, in this setting here. John 6 and verse 51 is where he's going to start. Now, do everybody have a program? I mean, a copy of the message? So you can easily, you already know where we're going and we can roll through this. John 6 and 51 says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh. Read which I will give for the life of the world. Mm -hmm. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh I'm confused, to eat? Like people are in the confused, confused in the end of the day as a way they relate to Passover. How can he do this? Read. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Ain't this the same thing that he just said in 37? I'm going to raise him up. I'm going to do this at the last day. Let's get down and we'll get right on into this so we can get into our text. Uh, verse 6 and see what he's talking about. Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard... When they had heard this said, this is in hard saying. Who the, can hear The disciples didn't understand it then. Here it is 2,000 years later, and people still don't understand the Spirit of God and how God works and how he moves in the lives of people, even to this day. Read. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, do it this offend you? <laughs> and I've had to do that. Do this offend you because I tell you the truth? Skip down to verse uh, 60. What's the next verse? Three. Three. Read that. It is the spirit that quickens. It is the spirit that make it alive, saints. It's the spirit. Read on. The flesh profited nothing. The flesh profited nothing. This is what he said over there. The letter kill it. The word. In Second Corinthians chapter three and six. It don't and, and it don't do anything, saints. If you don't have the word of God within you, and according to the way God said, you don't have anything. 
This is why we have all of the foolishness running around in the churches today. Amen. If you have it, it's going to, the first thing that it's going to do, lead and guide you into all truth. That's what I tell you how, and he can tell you about it, talking about the change and all of these things. This hadn't been even a year with this young man. But when God filled with his spirit the way he said that he would do it, you would see a great change. Samuel would get up and even study just to say good afternoon to, to do it. But he can get up and expound on the word of God. How can he do those things? Only by the spirit of God. Read the next, read, finish that verse. I'll start that over. It is the spirit that quickens. And the spirit that make light. This flesh profit is nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak, says. This is Christ talking. They are what, Cedric? They are spirit. They are spirit. And they are life. And they give life, says. It's the word. And if you're not filled with it first and above all things, and we're going to get into the other part of this. We're not going to leave anything out in this series. We, we covered everything, even from the evil angel. But if you don't have his word, say so you don't have anything at all. Go back and look. How can you prophesy when you don't have it? What are you going to prophesy? How can you preach? And it marvels me that people can stand and preach and people talking about, uh, oh, what an outstanding message. Oh, that was deep. And, and they ain't used nobody by <laughs> what, are you, what, are they, what do you have to talk about? Hmm. And I don't have anything against hooping. That pr you be yourself. Do whatever you do. As long as you stay in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the word, in, in the word of God. But don't do things and, and talk about the spirit. We talked about that. Made me do it. And the spirit is only going to do whatever God commands for it to do. Let's look at this in John uh, Ezekiel chapter 2. Run Ezekiel chapter 2. I want to show you how these guys, what they had to do. And I sat down and I talked with a lady the other day. Again yesterday. Begging of her almost. Please take time out and read the word of God. I've, so many times I've told people these things. It don't come overnight. I tell him, this is the man. I, I told him. He's not trying to get away yet. I'm trying to get away. It won't come. Like I told him, take time and read. And this thing has been so good for him, to him. This man that went fasting and just did one last week, a three-day fast just to have more knowledge and understanding of God's word. And he did this continuously over and over and over. How many other people, even on his birthday, White had things set aside for him. He called a fan because he wanted more spiritual strength and growth from the Father. And that's what he did. When he celebrated his birthday until the day after, after that. How serious, is it? How serious is it to you? What did he do? He did the same thing that Ezekiel did during his time of fasting. Ezekiel chapter 2, he's going to start reading at verse 3. Ezekiel 2 and 3, read that. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee... I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation. Oh, Lord, that, that read rebellion. that again. You I think the children of Israel are really nice. You think uh, uh, Jennifer and them are really nice. Sister Greta and them are nice. Sister Brown and nice. Uh, are, you, are you all the children of Israel? You are? Read it again so they can hear it and they hear it. <laughs> and he said unto me, son of man. Brother Mark. I send thee to a children of Israel. I'm sending you to Sister Brown, Sister Jennifer, Greta, and Ella Duncan. I'm sending you to these people. To a rebellious nation that has rebelled come against on, come, me. Come on, can I get a like the preacher would say, can I get a witness? Or is, is, uh, would you be in that number? Uh, I said we used to. You, and you still are. <laughs> <laughs> they, they and their fathers have transgressed against me. Even Saints, until this very day. Israel have always went against. God was the one that called and ordained. And for whatever reason, they always went against the thing that God called them to do. Read. Let's go down to 7. Mm -hmm. Down to verse 7. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear. Speak it, whether they hear it or not. Or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. Mm -hmm. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious Don't be house. Like them. Now what do you got to do, Ezekiel? Read. Open thy mouth. Open your mouth. And eat that I give thee. And them. eat what I'm going to give you. And he was simply talking about the word of God. How do you eat the word of God? 
Huh? Do you think he just took his book and did what this, uh, And we don't even want to talk foolish. I'm not even getting into that. You eat the word of God simply by reading the word of God. You eat it simply by reading. You're going to have to take time. If you want to know about the God of this Bible, the God of Israel, you got to read about him. If you want to know about me, if you want to know my ways, see, this is why Israel, as Psalm 103 said, they only knew the acts of God. They never knew about his ways. They didn't spend time with him. And that's something, say. Read on. And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without. And there was written therein lamentation and mourning. There were written lamentation and mourning and woe. All of these things were written. I'm going to show you how this thing comes. Thanks. And it's good. When you come into the Sabbath, it's so joyous. You're learning. You're doing this and you're doing this. But Ezekiel said, well, within that, Mark quick. <laughs> Woe and lamentation and mourning. When I want to do this, somebody died in their family. And, and, and for some odd reason, I don't know why they had, they didn't do it in the days of my grandmother, but some, every time now, every funeral appears on the Sabbath day. Let me say this for those of you all that love Jesus and, 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 and that Manuel, who I call him. If they wouldn't bury him on the Sabbath day, how do you think your mama and daddy and everybody else is so much better if he couldn't be buried on the Sabbath day? Think about that. See, we, we're so confused in mind. Well, it don't really make no difference. Well, it don't make no difference to you, but the word of God or the Holy Spirit, or let me say it the way you used to, the Holy Ghost says different, said that it do make a difference. The Holy Ghost do say that. Read on. Verse chapter 3, going into chapter 3 in that same Ezekiel there, verse 1, 3 and 1, read that. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll and go speak unto the house of Israel. Before you can prophesy, before you can preach, before you can do this, thing, you got to eat the scroll. You hear me telling you all the time, I don't want you giving nobody no advice on nothing. I don't care what you've been doing. If you don't tell them what the word of God says in some form, I don't want you, nobody with the Bible study group of Israel, I don't care what you've been through and how you went through it. I don't care how many children you have and trying to help somebody. If you can't find it within the scripture, your advice is just a commentary and every, it's just your opinion and everybody had one. And I told you that when Naaman was healed of leprosy, what if Naaman would have went around and told everybody I, that had leprosy in that time, I got healed of leprosy. You All you got to do is go dip seven times. And see, I, I hear this stuff, and it's foolish. One brother had cancer. I just don't say God blessed and healed him. But you know what his thing was? You know what he did? Man, all I did, I just smoked weed every day and every night. <laughs> so he go around and he witnesses and he testify, all you got to do is smoke weed. That might be good for somebody. As I told you, I'm sanctified and I'm, I'm holy and I'm, you know, I told you all that last night. No one clean thing like drugs have ever been in my mouth. <laughs> all right. That's not good advice to give to people. If it helped you, maybe that was your word. Let it be. But as far as the rest of you all, if it's not in the word, you can't share that. What verse again? Go, it's, read that verse again, verse 1. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll and go and go speak unto the house eat of Israel. Eat the roll. And some of us, when we, once again, when we hear this truth, Sister Brown, oh, it'd be so good and so good. We'd be excited. We want to just tell all of our family members. You got other preachers in the family, then you become a preacher. We want to preach to everybody as soon as we come into the truth. Amen? We want everybody, because we know the truth, and it's just a natural thing. If you, if you know it's right, you know it's the truth, 
And you know other people are walking in darkness. You want people to know. Yeah. Who, who wouldn't do this thing? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, just to tell you, they probably are not going to receive mm -hmm. you well as what you think they are. You're going to see that uh, thing, what, what uh, Ezekiel said, it went down real sweet. Yeah. <laughs> but it was bitter when you go try to present the people and especially telling them about eating according to the dietary law and it's for your health. It was sweet when you first got it. But when you eat, preach to those people, things like that. <laughs> it becomes bitter. You say, Nobody want to hear you. They ain't your friend no more. <laughs> Read some. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Now you remember what he told us over in the earlier chapter in John? Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Cause you this, put this in your belly. Mm -hmm. Now when you get it there, you can't, you, and once you're there, say, I don't care who you are. I tell people all the time, you can take women, and people say women don't have nothing to say about it. How can you read and put all of this word in you, and then you don't have nothing to say? How can you will almost explode? It's almost impossible. impossible. You see, we don't teach this thing right. I'm not telling you that a woman should pastor and do. I didn't say that. But if she's reading and studying as much as I do, I'm going to show you how this thing happened with Jeremiah. It's going to be like five, but it don't make no difference if she's in the Walmart or the dollar store. Dealer, uh, and, 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 and where is she at? The word is going to be burning and she's going to shed some truth. And this is to anybody. How you, uh, 26 years old. You ain't seen many, and I'm just going to say it. You don't see many 26 year old want to go on a three day fast to separate themselves from, let alone their wife from nothing else. And not only did that, he separated from the, the, the social media. All of those things were within his fast. He did away with, how many do that? You can't put your phone down, some of you, for an hour. We need it early. Read, where you at? End of three. Read. Then did I eat it. And when it, he ate it? And it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Oh, it was sweet like honey when I ate it. When I read that word, oh, it made me feel so good. Read. And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel. Go back to the church. And speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. It seems like it is sometimes. Seems like they have a strange speech and hard language. I don't know why Shanita is so hard for Israel to understand the thing that's already in you. If you get around people, you get around people like Shanita and them, and whoever it is, it don't make no difference. All they got to do is do what Paul did to Timothy. Just listen to them and allow them to stir up what's already in you. When God called us as a nation, it don't really seem like that, but it's true. When God called us as a nation of people, he ordained all of us as kings and priests. It's sad that we won't get it until most of us get it in the world tomorrow. That we don't want to operate the way he said. We don't even want to be God. The scripture said that I have said that you are God's. And it can't be broken. But because you can't see yourself as being there, you'll die. Like men. And fall like one of the princes. That's a tough place to be. Let's look at this and see if it was any different with John in Revelation chapter 10. He had to eat it. And when he did, he had to go prophesy. And once again, say, it don't make no difference who you are. When you're filled with this word, with this spirit, in this way, you can't do nothing else but do it. And we're going to deal with the other part of it. The church, what the church talks about. If you don't have, <laughs> I ain't going to say that. But you've got to get this word down in you before you speak with any tongue or do anything. It won't show up. The only way it show up that way is to, if, if it do fill you with that and you speak with uh, uh, other language or tongues, if you want to say it that way, it's just a sign. The Bible said, uh, Paul talks about it. And then even after that, you got to go back and still put the word in. You got to spend time with this. Uh, Revelation 10, and he's going to start reading at verse 1. Read that. 
And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. Mm -hmm. This and, is this holy angel, minister spirit, servant spirit, or holy ghost, if you want to call him that. He come down. What, read? And his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. What did he have? Verse 2. And he had in his hand a little book. Not a little book. That's the same thing that Ezekiel had. Read that. And he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth. And cried with a loud voice as when the lion roared. Skip down to verse 8. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel. Go get the little book out of the hand of the angel. Say, when the spirit of truth comes, he always comes to inform you and to help you in some kind of way. This has been the last three messages that we talked about. Read that. Which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make, make thy that and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. He told he didn't tell Ezekiel about it being bitter, but he told John it's gonna be bitter. You're gonna be sweet like honey going down. A word here. But when you get ready to preach it to people and they fight against you, and, and you can have people that's on dialysis on whatever it is they're going through, and you can tell them. But just change your diets. Yes. Get to God's dietary law. Mm -hmm. And they would, some of them would cuss you. And the old folks said from 10 to K. I've been <laughs> eating all this time. <laughs> you keep right on with your silly self, <laughs> The word will be sweet for now when you get it. Then when you present it sometimes, the people can make it seem so bitter. I'm going to show you that. What verse are you at? Verse 10. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. Because he had to do the same thing that, he, that Ezekiel had to do. He had to go preach it. And it was bitter, bitter, bitter. I'm going to tell you how God told Jeremiah, don't pay no attention. Shanita, when you're preaching this thing, people are going to frown at you. They're going to look at you like you ugly or like you smell or something. Ezekiel, God told Ezekiel, don't pay them no mind. If this thing is down in you, it's your job to prophesy. Thank you, Let's look at this in uh, 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 Colossians. Just flip back to Colossians. That's a few pages, chapter 3. And we'll deal with a few things here. Colossians chapter 3. All of these guys that I told you on uh, last night are saying the exact same thing. Let's look at this. Colossians chapter 3, and we're going to start reading at verse 16. Colossians 3 and 16. Read that. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the word wisdom. dwell where? Dwell in you richly. In you. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. Ezekiel had to put it in him. John had to put it in him. And we're going to go over and look at, it, at uh, 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 Ezekiel, I mean Jeremiah in a minute. And we're going to see what Peter said about all the prophets of old. Read that again. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. In wisdom? Teaching, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Say, when this word is in you, that's your job there. You have a job to do. In your singing. You heard me. I tell the people all the time. I'm just telling, uh, 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 I'm trying not to call people names. I'm just telling the lady yesterday, be careful what you sing. What was the song that we were singing? I was singing, uh, uh, Lord, you don't have to move my mountain. Now, I don't say that, but give me the strength to climb. And Lord, and people shouting and doing, don't take away my stomach and blood, but leave me all around. That sound, to me, it sounds foolish. It sound good to you. Why would you say that? Lord, you don't have to take cancer away, but just give me this script to endure the chemo and radiation in so many words. That's foolishness. That's what I tell the people. Even when you've been filled with the spirit, he talked about it in a spiritual song, there's something that you ain't going to say. You ain't going to be around there saying I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain no more. <laughs> you won't say that make no difference how much your grandma and them sung it and you like it. How they did it at all the other, other church program, certain songs, you won't let come out of your mouth no more. Yeah. See, we don't, we don't, and we do these things 
and the church will fall out. And it ain't, it just literally, it won't be long. I go back and look at them, the church have fell out and fell down. <laughs> Everybody got everything they were singing about. And the Bible said, even the preacher, the Bible said, like priests, <laughs> it's rough, it's sad. And I've been looking at this thing last night. Sometimes, man, we were looking at this song one night. Sometimes I look at our people. And I'm not just talking so much as a race because God had called us to teach it to all people, white, black. I don't get into that. But I, especially with these people, it didn't bring tears to my eyes. Sometimes I sit and I just sigh and cry because I know it don't have to be that way. That's why I tell people all the time, if you're preaching, and if you're not doing this thing according to the way, the word of God, and listen to me. It don't make no difference who you are. I know we have different preachers looking in sometimes. Stop. Learn the way of God. It ain't that you can't start back. But your blood, that's going to be required of you. Every word that come out of your mouth that's not true, you're going to have to give an account of it. It's one thing just to have your blood on your hand. But think about it. If you got 50 members, 100, 20, if you got 1,000, with that faith that almost, if you're going to be almost just like the angel, it ain't no way for repentance for you that you will make it into God's kingdom. What were we at, 17. 17. And whatsoever you do in word whatsoever or deed. Whatsoever you do in what? Word or in deed. In word, saints. Read it. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to in God. In other words, whatever it is, the word, you got to do it in his name, but it's by his word. Let's look at it over here in 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, and see what Peter had to say about this thing. I let, girl, wrote my, that thing now, a little bit of writing. I know I write small, and I can't hardly see none of it. Thank God I got the Holy Ghost, and I don't have to need, I don't really need my notes to teach it. Just try to keep me in line, Keisha. I got it, I got it. And whatever thing I was singing last night. I don't know if he got it or not. He got it. As soon as he joined the Bible study group of Israel. That's a good thing. You better stay here. Where's, where's I'm going to go, Brother Mark? You had a, you had a words of eternal life. <laughs> I, I would go over here with what's called them. They don't have them. I just stay right here. That's what Peter had to do. Let's go. I enjoy you all. I just have fun with my teaching. First Peter chapter 1, verse 10. Read that. Let's see what Peter said about this. First Peter 1, and he's talking about all the prophets. First Peter uh, 1 and 10. Read that. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Now, the prophets prophesied. And he's talking about the prophet Jeremiah, Zika, Habakkuk, Nahum, uh, all of those guys there. Obadiah, uh, uh, Haggai, Michael, all of these guys. The prophets of old, they searched carefully and prophesied of the grace that would come. Verse 11 says, Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ. The Spirit of Christ? Which was in them. What, where was the Spirit of Christ at? In them. It was in the prophets of old. Not so much as overshadowing them. How did the spirit of Christ get in them guys? They couldn't prophesy if they didn't have the, the spirit in them. What are you talking about, Brother Mark? John 6, in this area, what we're talking about, John 6, the words that I speak, they are spirit, and the words give life. That's why it's so important that you read it. You got to have it down in you so that you can prophesy. Read that again, verse 11. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. The Spirit of Christ that was in them, verse 12. Unto whom it was revealed that, that not unto themselves but unto it us. It went over to them, saints. <laughs> you better get this. Not only to them, but to us. Just as well. You're going to have to get it the same way that the prophet of old had to get it. And even in the New Testament with Peter there. I'm going to show you this. Read. But unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel. Now I'm going to show you how this thing come. Read. Unto you with the Holy Ghost. With the Holy Ghost? 
sent down from heaven, <laughs> which things the angels desire to look into. Listen, here, even the angels desire to look in this thing about the spirit, that, and, 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 and we don't want it that way. This is why the Bible said in one testified about you Israelites in a certain place. Say, God, what is it about man yes. Yes. that you are so mindful of him? You've given him dominion. You've given him authority in the earth realm. And nobody act like it. Nobody act like it. We're running around saints and we, we can't do anything. That's what I tell you, I don't, don't, don't come if, and not, not every member of the Bible study group of Israel because you've been taught whatever you have going on, the first place you see, you don't call me for whatever is going on. In all your ways, the first person that you're going to acknowledge is you, you, and, and he's given us authority in this earth realm. He's given us the keys to the kingdom. We won't operate what Christ came to establish upon us. We won't operate in that. Sir. And the, and the angels, once again, they're looking back at you, God, and he, they can't see it. What is it about this man, God, that you're so mindful of? You visit him. Even the one that messed up in the God. When, the, when God, when, the, when, the, when an evil angel went in there, had, didn't have nothing else in the, in the earth. Wasn't nobody else to deceive him. And God still went back and visited man after the evil angel had went in there. I'm going to show you this. Mm. Like I said, mm, mm. when I think about this thing, I know it don't have to be this way. Mm. I know it don't say mm. Let's go. Where you at? Second Peter. Uh, let's go to Second Peter, saints. If we only took it the way God said it. Thank you. What we have said. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 16. Second Peter 1, to flip over just a little bit, Saints. Saints is so much in the word of God. Thank Second Peter, what we have said is 2 Peter uh, 1 and 16. 1 and 16. Let's look at this, saints. 2 Peter 1 and 16. For we have not followed cunningly. Uh, come back up to verse 13. It's, it's my job. Thank you, Father. It's my job. Thank you. 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 Go ahead and turn it up. You all adjust that after wherever you needed it. Somebody go back there and flip it up. Just do just wherever you needed it, wherever you're comfortable with. You. Let's look at it. As long as saints. And I feel like my brother Paul. As long as I'm in this tent or this tabla, I'm obligated to stir up your mind upon spiritual things. Read that. Just go, uh, go up in 13. Yea, I think it me, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Put, putting you in remembrance, saying, of what the word of God is saying. Skip down to verse 16, where, where the text is at now. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We didn't do that, read. But were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For we received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Skip down to verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private no interpretation. No prophecy of the scripture. It's of any private interpretation. None of them. So whatever I know about the word of God, you can know the same thing. Whatever Sunita know, every woman in there can know the same thing. She didn't get it. She didn't get it privately. Read. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men. It didn't come in old time by the will of man. And what I tell you, you, you don't you can't give your opinion on anything. Now the way that seemed right to man, yes it is. Solomon said, but the, the end of it, the way that it ends in. Read. Verse 21. But holy men of verse God. Verse 21 over again. 
For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. How did, what did, what was, what was Jeremiah moved by? The Holy Spirit. What was Ezekiel moved by? The Holy Spirit. They hold my back up. Holy Spirit. Holy men wrote it. They were moved by the Holy Spirit. How can you preach if you're not moved by it? And how can you preach if it's not in you? How can you preach? We got this thing all mixed up, sir. That's why, you know, any, remember the people go to other 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 other, other uh, churches and they always calling me, telling me different. How is it that the people here know more than what the average preacher know? And I'm talking about the younger one. That shouldn't be on the You got preachers that have been preaching older than some of these children are eight, old. Yeah. Yes. Preaching longer than they are old. That shouldn't be. We got a ways to go, saints. What we had said. In the they got it that they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Let's look at it in Jeremiah. This is all, I, like, I, I, I like Jeremiah. Jeremiah was my cousin. He was on my. Uh, he was on, I don't know what side of the family Jeremiah come in. He was my cousin. We looked just alike. Look at, look at me. Y'all see it in me? You see it? You got two sides. You see it? Y'all got two sides. You see Jeremiah with me? Mm -hmm. Peter was your cousin. <laughs> and they know where I'm going with that. I would doubt it. Always running his mouth. <laughs> uh, y'all tell little Duncan y'all love him. Yeah, do it now, please. Please do it now. Y'all tell him you love him. Even though you do run your mouth something. <laughs> All right. Let's look at this. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 15, you say. The word got to be in you. Jeremiah 15 and 16. O Lord, thou knowest, remember me and visit me and revenge me of my persecutors. Persecutors, uh -huh. Take me not away in thy long, long suffering. Know, know that for thy sake I have suffered rebuke. For your sake, God, I have suffered rebuke. Remember what he told Ezekiel? Go on, preach. Don't worry about how them people look at you. Don't worry about the insults and, uh, insults and their threat. You do what I tell you to do. Read. Thy words were found. Thy what was found, Cedric? Thy words. Thy what was found? Thy words. Thy words was found. And what did you do with them, Jeremiah? Read it. And I did eat them. He, Jeremiah did the same thing that Ezekiel had to do with the word. He had to eat it. The same thing that John had to do with the word. He had to eat it. And the same thing that any of you, if you want to prophesy. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Thank you. Glory God. You don't have nothing to say. If you had the Holy Ghost ain't gonna do it for you. Not that way he won't. <laughs> I knew he won't. They can't speak on their own accord. They can only speak what God gives them. That's the reason why I say. And the only thing God is not gonna do anything that contradicts his word. Amen. Read it again. Verse 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord, God of hosts. He, he called by what, Sammy? By his name. I am called by thy name. That's why I say, uh, that's why Paul, I told you last night, I'm not ashamed of the way that I'm living here, Sammy. I'm not ashamed to be called with the Bible study group of Israel. I'm not ashamed of this thing. This way and walk of life. You got some of our people that, you know, they don't want to associate with certain things. And then when you mention anything about Brother Nall, first thing they say, he called himself an Israelite. <laughs> you call and you let the people call you up and you don't say anything about it. You don't say nothing about it. Young people walk up and then they had a young boy, a young man walk up. Oh, come on, do what he do. Well, no, dog. Mm. No, brother. <laughs> I, that ain't me. <laughs> no, call me Mark or something else. That, that's not me. You got to tell them that. You yeah, ain't not gonna go and preach it. You don't call me a dog. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not that. Mm -hmm. Damn not. So I say it again. You don't want to be called an Israelite, but you let people call you everything else that you you go along with. And it's not a joking matter with me. You can't joke with me like that. No. Me and I already have a bad name. They call the cow the base Anybody know what that was? Come on, Bible reader. 
Well, not yet, not, not yet, but the, 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 bar, the cow of Bashan is in Isaiah. What was he talking about? It wasn't no help for us. Anybody? Worth about $5, if you can answer it today. Huh? There's a phrase in the Bible that's, where he talks about the cows of, of Bashan. What was he talking about? Do you have your front order? No, we're not looking up. You can't tell me right now. The Holy Ghost don't bring it to you. You don't get it. You better get the Holy Ghost. It was, he was talking, it was describing the women. 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 Go back and look that up in Isaiah. Now, the other thing that they use the word term dogs in the Bible. Now, they talked about it. They're all Greedy, dumb, lazy, sleeping dogs. You're not going to call me to do anything, and I'm going to do it. And even in that time, when they look at a dog, uh, now this was in Sister Brown the other day, and my mom and them uh, told a man, oh, low down, dirty dog. What? It was in your day. I didn't say, well, I didn't say you said. They called him in that day. What, what, was the, what was that? What kind of man was that? Oh, low down, dirty dog. What kind of yeah. So you know what it is. And then you allow people to call you that and shake their hand. No. Uh -huh. Women, young lady, don't let nobody degrade you by calling you nothing outside of your name. Let's get into this. What we at? He, he talked about his word and then he was called by a name in 16. Let's just skip down to uh, verse 20. Uh, what we at, Sam? 21. Doing the 21st. A 20, yes, sir. And now, now he had put the word in. He had ate Jeremiah, ate this word. He was feeling good about it. The word will bless you. Read. And I will make thee unto this people a fence brazen wall, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not now, prevail against thee. people are going to fight against you sometime early when you're teaching the church truth. But the Bible said that they won't prevail. They, they won't do it. I don't care what they say, it's just critical. If you're standing in truth, Shanita, I don't care what, how, what they say, it won't come to, uh, 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 to you. It's going to go to naught. It won't be. It won't do it. Read it again. Verse 20. And I will make thee unto this people a fence brazen wall, and they shall not fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. They will fight against you, but they won't prevail. Read For I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, saith the Lord. He with you to save and deliver. He got those angels. Read. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked, and I will redeem thee out of the hand of the now, terrible. Now I want you to remember here. Jeremiah there. Sometimes saints, there are things that could press you so hard. And you look at you say, Well, Lord, I, I look for you to deliver me out of there. And he didn't do it at that time. And you get mad. I ain't preaching no more. He you told your mom, I ain't saying there another prayer. They poem, they, they laughed at me. <laughs> I ain't singing no more in the choir. Saying, they didn't look at my they did they face it didn't look right. <laughs> Let's go over here and see how Jeremiah felt about this in Jeremiah 20. I'm not going to do it. God, you said that you were going to be a fence all around me. <laughs> it don't make no difference how it goes. If the word is in you, when you say you were going to do it, you're going to find yourself doing the very thing that you say you want to do. This is the word. Now, it, it works more than that. Paul talks about how it works on the evil side. With the evil spirit that's in you, the guy in your mind. Paul talked about it, oh wretched man that I am. He said, in me, talking about in my flesh, he talked about how it died from his mind, what we talked about, you know, when he wanted to do good. Now, that's where it is with the Spirit of God, saints. If you got it in you, even if you say you ain't going to do it, you're going to find yourself doing it. Remember what God said to Jeremiah there a minute ago. Let's look at this, Jeremiah chapter 20, he's going to read verse 1. 21, read that. Now, Pasha, the son of Emmer, the priest, who was also now, who, who, who was Pasha? The priest. He was the son of the priest. You got that? Emmer, the, 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 he was the priest. Thank you, Samuel. Read. Who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord. Heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Jeff, Jeremiah preaching in the church, Mark. Everybody loved it. Jeremiah, my cousin. He the one taught me how to preach. So you know, Jeremiah did good if I learned what I learned from him. Now, everybody is in the church preaching. Verse 2 said, Then Pastor smote Jeremiah the Pastor prophet. did what? Hit him. He hit Jeremiah? 
I thought God said he was going to be a fish all around you. I thought he was going to take care of your enemy. I thought he told you, don't worry about the insults, the way they look at you. Read it again. Then Pasher smote Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. But, and everybody could come by and look at Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. Then made an open shame of you. know what they said? You better not shame my name. What Mr. Mm -hmm. Henry said? Then made an open shame of him. Oh, yeah. uh, I see why Jesus said, uh, if they spoke you or warned you. Uh, Jeremiah didn't go with that one. Jeremiah was upset. Let's see how Jeremiah felt about this. <laughs> Verse 7. Verse 7. Listen to this thing. O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone Everybody mocking me. Everybody walking by here mocking at me and making fun of me, Lord. Yeah. And you told me you were going to keep me. Yeah. I ate your word just like you told me. It was sweet. When I went out, I really enjoyed it. You blessed me. Now here it is, these people, then this man come up and, you know, it's hard to be to hit somebody. They don't want to tell they to do that. They hard. It's, they, they, they be ready. They got all them muscles. They just want to. <laughs> you can't take it. They don't want so long that a black person take it anyway. Go ahead on, son. Go ahead and make it <laughs> Go ahead on. I tell Mark right now, I walk by and hit him sometimes harder than I can. Just to see what he's going to do. He just lay like, come on. Uh, all three of y'all. He must have you too. Want to show him something else, Doctor? Uh -huh. He better not say it to you, and I, I, he better not let me hear. Verse 8, listen at this. Look what Jeremiah says. For since I spake, I cried out, and cried violence and spoil, because the word of the Lord was made of reproach what unto me. What was made of reproach to him? The word. The word of the Lord. Read. And the derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. Listen to what Jeremiah said. So they, I ain't going to make mention of his name no more. I'm not going to preach. I'm not going to do it. You don't let this man hit me. And then they got me, everybody walking by making a fool out of me. God, I'm not going to preach in your name. I'm not going to do nothing no more. Mm. Keep it in mind. He was filled with the spirit of God. Read that. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. Jeremiah <laughs> said, I couldn't hold it. When I found myself, I didn't want more. Them people weren't even talking about me, but they didn't know what they were talking about. And I was weary, I couldn't hold it back, and I found myself in the... You talking about y'all sure? <laughs> Man, those fringes you got on? <laughs> You, you forgot about being mad. That's where the spirit of God will do you. It'll do it. All that, we've been in that place. Amen. Some of, most of us have. I wasn't going to talk about it. And I was weary of holding it back. Jeremiah said it was just like fire in my bone. Ezekiel tried it. Ezekiel said, when I looked at that thing, he said, I saw it was just like a wheel. Turning in the middle of oh, yeah. He couldn't explain it. He couldn't explain it. Read the way yet. Ten. Read. For I heard the defaming of many, fear on every side. Report, say they, and we will report it. All my familiars watch for my haunting, saying, Peradventure he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge. That's what they said about him, saints. But don't worry about it. Even though they did hit you. I can assure you, God ain't gonna let it go like that. He told me this morning, saints. Thank you, Bob. He told me this morning. I bless everybody that bless you. And I curse those that curse you. God said, if you just walk in their ways and none of those diseases that I will put up on you. He said, but those people that hate you, and you all go back and look at it in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 15. I will lay diseases on those people that hate you and do you wrong. You better try to, as Ella Duncan said, you better try to do right by me. If any way possible. Let's go to our next place, Cedric. Oh, no, verse 11. I'm sorry, we got to get that. That's what I'm getting. Verse 11. But the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. 
Therefore my persecutors shall stumble, and they shall not prevail. They shall be they shall be greatly ashamed, for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. You got that? He gonna be with you. Don't worry about it. If they hit you, don't worry about it. If you, if by all means possible, turn the other cheek if you can. I guess I don't know. I can't give you no advice on that one. But if by me, because of the scripture said it, do it. But I know that he would do just what he said there. He gonna be with you as a mighty and awesome one. The persecutors, he gonna get them. They gonna stumble and they won't prevail. They gonna be greatly saved. They will not prosper. The everlasting confusion will be never forgotten. Let's look at this in Psalms. Hebrew. Hebrew chapter 6. Now see, once you've gotten this thing, saints, once you've tasted of it, don't give up on it. There's a scripture in Luke that said, I think Luke, no man putting his hand to the plow. Yeah, yeah. And then look back. Yeah. You ain't fit for the king. Now even Hebrew, Paul talked about it this way in Hebrew in 6. Anybody that's have tasted of this thing, saints, People have lives have been cut off in the land of, the, of this side, in the living, for God to raise you up tomorrow so that you don't mess yourself up. He'll take you out of here for those that have tasted of this thing, this word, this good spirit. Hebrew chapter 6, and he's going to start reading at verse 4. For it is. What I got down there? 6 and 4. Yeah, that's it. Hebrews 6 and 4, read. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again. It's, it's almost, it will be almost impossible, sir. For those that know this thing, walking in the ways of God, please don't turn back on it. Those that have been filled with his spirit, please don't turn back on it. It's almost impossible for you to be renewed. See, that's, that's what happened with the angel. See, ain't no repentance for the angel to come out with Satan. Don't be in that state, saints. What verse are you at? Six. All right. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh. They do that, saints. It's impossible, saints. For them that have tasted of this good spirit, if they be real. Let's show you what we're talking about. Psalm, Psalm 51. This is why David said this. And put him to an open shame. Mm -hmm. And that's what it will be. Now let's look at it. See, you make this. See, if you understand that verse there, you understand why David said what he said. Now, yeah, David had messed up a little bit. Cedric talked about it then in his message a minute ago. Psalm 51 is where we're going. Preachers, they used to love to preach this in the church. I hear them talking about this to David all the time. They they, never, they always told David's side of the story. They didn't tell their side of the story. They had a story going on too, Mom. They wouldn't tell. They are going to always try to save my cousin David. <laughs> Leave him alone. He just messed up. At least he did know how to pray and what to say. Let's look at this, uh, Psalm 51 and verse 7. And we know this is David repenting because of what had happened with Bathsheba when he looked at that woman and, and, and said, he said, took it, all of that stuff. You know what he did. Uh, verse 7, he went to tell him, purge me here to wash me. Verse 10 is what we're going to, down to. Purge me with hyssop. Going to verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew, renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean mind. The heart is the mind. That's one of the spirits that we're going to talk about probably the last mission before Pentecost. Creating me a clean, ain't talking nothing about the blood pump. Creating me a clean heart, clean mind. And renew your spirit. Where at? In my mind. How I said, if the spirit is housed in the body, where is it housed at? In the mind. That's what David wanted him to do. Now, David had messed up with his lower nature with Bathsheba. Why he didn't ask God to fix that? Right. See, we should sure yeah. wait. <laughs> you see that? Why didn't he pray for that? Lord, just fix my lower nature so that I don't. No, it's a natural thing. That's why I call it what it happened. What do you, you don't see the dog going around there asking the Lord to fix their lower nature. Nor the horse, nor the cow. It's a natural thing. 
We just know that with the natural things that we have, we got to follow the commands of God. He said everything for us, saints. This thing is not hard. Read it what David tells him to do. Do what? Cast me not away no, no, from I'm starting verse 10. 10 again. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Now listen to what David asked him to do. That's why he told you it's impossible for you to be filled with this thing and then turn away from it. Don't do that. This is what David said. Verse 11. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Please don't take your Holy Spirit from me. I'm going to show you here in just a little bit that was a man that had the spirit of God. God put it up on him. And when he put him up on him, the Bible said he was turned into a new man. And God took it away from him just as well as he put it up on him or in him. <laughs> I'm going to show you that in just a second. David said, Lord, I messed up. Please don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Read. What, 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 what verse? 12. Verse 12. Okay. Go ahead. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Uphold me with thy free or thy generous spirit. That's what he said. Where the spirit of the Lord is. There what? Liberty. Liberty. Freedom. Mm -hmm. Read. Then will I teach transgressors that thy ways. God, I got this spirit down in me. So what are you going to do? He's going to prophesy. I'm going to do what? Teach transgressors mm -hmm. thy ways. Uh-huh. And sinners shall be and then converted unto other people to come to you. Let's look at this in First Samuel Saints, chapter fifteen. Mm -hmm. This was that a Duncan cousin, Saul, First King of Israel. First <laughs> yeah. Samuel fifteen. You're gonna read verse seven. David asked God, "Don't take the spirit away from him," because he knew. He didn't have his spirit. <laughs> I would say he would be mere most miserable. First Samuel uh, um, 15 and 7. 15 and read that. First Samuel 15 and 7. Read that. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah until thou, thou comest to Shur that is over against Egypt. Now Saul had did a good thing. He had the hand of the Lord. He had been filled with his spirit. He smoked them out of mouth. Now the, the command was from God, kill everything. That was the command from God. Read on verse 8 said. And he took Agag, the king of, of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of God the sword. God told him to kill everything. What did you keep Agag alive for? Read. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep. He kept the best of the sheep. And of the oxen. The oxen. And of the fat lambs. The fat lambs. And the lambs. And all that was good and would not utterly God destroy them. God didn't tell him to do that, saints. Skip down to verse, uh, the next verse, verse uh, 15. 15. And Saul said, they have brought them from the Amalekites. For the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord what thy God. What were they going to do with them? Why did they keep them? To sacrifice. To who? The Lord thy God. As if God, Acts 17 said, as if he need anything from The sacrifices of God are according to Psalms are a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Be, O oh God, you would not. You're going to keep the best thing because the Lord need them. You know what that sounds like? The people in the church today. <laughs> so just like, no, nah, see, we're going to do this and then bring it under the church. As if God needs you. You think he's going to need it? I told you what he said about the candlesticks last night. That's why people are not being able to go in and do these things now. Now, I'm just not a boast. I thank God for being able to be able to worship all the way through. But you better get this thing down. What verse are we at? In the 15. Read that. To sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. <laughs> he kept the good, going to sacrifice to God. Verse 22 says, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great, and Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? What do you think God wants from you, uh, uh, Saul? You think God would rather have a sacrifice of, of 10,000 lambs and whatever it was than for you to just simply obey his voice? 
Now the Bible said that the people won't get the spirit of God and act Paul said you won't get the Holy Spirit if you don't be obedient. As simple as that. See, ain't nothing changed in this thing. Ain't nothing changed. The next verse says 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as an in, is as iniquity and idolatry, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. I told you, he said it over there in Hebrew. Once you had this spirit, and it's taken away from you, it's pretty rough. Flip over to the next chapter, chapter six, 16, he's going to read verse 13. Read that, 16 and 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. The spirit of the Lord come upon David? Mm -hmm. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. <laughs> an evil spirit from who? The Lord. God took his holy angel that was over him, pulled everything out of Saul, and sent an evil angel down to trouble or disturb him. So you understand why David says, Lord, whatever you do, don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Saul in here trying to justify Shanita. Well, Lord, I did get them for you. Listen, we brought them to church. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Where we at, said That was the end of 23. I want to show you something here in Genesis. 14. And then we're going to give this up. You all got the rest of your notes on it. Go to Genesis chapter 2. Because we was talking about eating saints. The word. I'm going to show you how it messed up. How Mother Eve. And women, you ought to be mad about that today. Mm -hmm. Better you, Sister Critter, and Miss Van B. You've had more cheering than anybody in here. Uh, did it hurt? Did it hurt you, Sister Critter? You had the Holy Ghost, you must have. Mama, did it hurt you? Well. <laughs> <laughs> Mama said, I ain't going to tell no story. Now, she said she forgot about it. It was six deliveries that she had. Y'all, I'll tell you what, when you get over yonder in the land, ask Eve about it. So what in the world were you thinking about it? He had it made. Because when I get there, I'm going to talk to Adam. Made all this work and stuff. I've been working 16, 17 hours and I didn't have to do that dairy. You think I ain't going to talk to him when I get there? People talking about when I get there, I'm going to see Jesus. I'm going to go first people. I'm going to go up to talk to people that caused problems in the earth that I had to experience with. Then I'm going to go back and talk to my father that was in King, all of the rest of them that didn't obey God's command that got us in this captivity. As long as we are, we got to stay here till he returns. I'm going to go find them guys, Jehoshaphat and all of the rest of them. Man, what in the world was y'all thinking? You got a long conversation. Yeah, I have. I got time, man. I done been made a spiritual being then. I ain't got what else I'm going to do. <laughs> Come down and teach some of you guys and make sure the rest of you all go up to keep their feet. The rest of the people go up to keep their feet. <laughs> I ain't got nothing else to do. I'm going to be just like Christ. Well, when he popped in and on them, they're going to be all sitting in there, well there, and I'm going to just pop down in the middle of them. They ain't going to understand the word because they don't understand it. I'm going to say, Shalom. <laughs> and it's going to scare the out of them. <laughs> oh, Lord. Let, let's get this. Right. We'll deal with these two, two things here. This thing is serious, ma'am. Uh, not yet. Give me just a second. Genesis chapter 2, and he's going to start reading at verse, uh, what were we at, 7? 7. 2 and 7. Read that. And the Lord God formed man of, of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden. Now we're even going to talk about that, that breath of the spirit that he breathed into him. We're going to deal with that a little bit later. Read on. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put What did God plant uh, eastward in Eden? What did he have? A it garden. was a garden. Read that. And there he put the man whom he had formed, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every, every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, 
and the tree of knowledge of, of now good God planted this garden had all kind of good trees in there but also there was a tree that called the tree of life and there was another tree that was called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Yeah. You finished that? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right, skip down to verse, what we at? 16. 16. Skip down to verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of God the God commanded who, Cedric? The man. One more time. Man, you better get there. Uh, uh, Cedric, you better get there. Commanded Adam. No, he commanded Cedric. <laughs> <laughs> you see, y'all, he just the same way Adam trying to get out. Adam put it on Eve. And he's back here trying to put it on Adam. He doesn't put it on Darius. Yes, there. You know that wasn't going to work. <laughs> Men, if you are the head, Hallelujah. <laughs> then they come on in that and then do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> For laughing about it. Darius, you get home, you ought to get it. Let's go. Read that verse. What verse were you at? 16. 16. Read that. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest of thereof thou shalt surely die. Now, you remember what Ezekiel had to do with the scroll? Eat the scroll. You remember what uh, 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 John in, in Revelation had to do with the scroll? Eat the scroll. You remember what Jeremiah did in Jeremiah 15? He told God, I ate, I found your words, and I ate them, and they was good. Now, he told him, because this tree, this tree here, saints, is not a literal tree, like what you can go out there and see. This tree here, what he's talking about, this tree is none other than Satan, the devil. And what he's going to eat is his words, and it's going to mess him up. I'm going to show you that. Read that last verse again. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So every day that you eat of it, you are going to die. Verse, chapter 3, verse uh, 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And now who said, was Cedric? The, the serpent. The serpent. Now where did he come from? I thought he did it with the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The serpent was more what? Cunning than any of the other beasts. Read on. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of the ep Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman now, said. Now what is he doing asking the woman these questions? Who did God give the command to? Man. Now, when the angel, and this was a good angel, was talking in Judges chapter 13 last week, was talking to Manon's wife. What did Manon do? She ran back. And told her husband, get this in mind, women. If you don't understand, if you don't have the word, run to your head. She ran back and got her husband and said, It's a man of God down there talking to me. You come on and you meet him and you deal with this thing. Y'all get this? See, this is how this thing is all messed up. Every protocol is all out of order. We, they have gotten it out. It's still in order the way God said it. But man had messed it up. Read that verse again. What verse are you at? Verse 1. Read. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Read. It was skipped down to 6. Yeah, go ahead and read verse 2 again. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit now of the trees the woman, of the garden. Yeah, okay, and read. Verse 6 says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, Saw that it was good for food? And that it was pleasant to the eyes, mm -hmm. and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took, one, she took of the fruit thereof. She listened to everything that Satan said. And that wasn't enough, saints. What did she do? And did eat. And gave also unto her husband. Everything her that she heard, Daria, she went back and presented it all to her husband. Mm -hmm. And the same thing about it, Mark, which you better stand your ground, son. And he did eat. God had given him the command already. He'd already given it to him. Read. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Mm -hmm. Read. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And I told you, he's still going to show up to meet you. Don't make no difference if he messed up. 
He deal with them evil angels or the evil spirit or the evil ghost. At his appointed time to show up. He going to show up. Read. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, I was naked. I heard your voice, God. But I was afraid. I was naked. I heard my, I heard you. And I hid myself. What did God, what's the next thing God asked him? And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Who told you that thing? Saints, the only way you get information, somebody teach it to you, or you read it. God had already told them, don't communicate with that tree. And see, this is communication. They ate the fruit of lies. Mm. She did. She gave it to her husband. And he did eat. God showed up the same time and way that he did. And, 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 and I say this to you, saints. If it's not in the word of God, I don't care who said it. And I've said this. Now, listen. The Bible says in Matthew 24 and it's also in 25 and in, in Luke, when Luke talked about it. In the last day, many people are going to be deceived. Yes. How are they going to deceive you? They're not going to be down on Beer Street, won't be on Bourbon Street, or won't be on no other street where people are. Mm -hmm. And God said they probably some of even the elect, some of the saints in other words, mm -hmm. are going to be deceived. Running after sign when they see people doing it don't make no difference what you do. If you haven't did, if God, if you're doing something opposite of what the word of God say, I'm not, we're not going with that. We are trying to get to the place of safety to wit to witness during this time. We're not worrying about signs. He's already told you that these things are gonna happen. Be careful of the words that you hear. We talked about this in, during the last day of my living bread. Be careful of the living of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They was confused and messed up in my head. It, 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 it cried mad because we didn't bring no bread and we didn't do anything. He said, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about of their doctrine, their teaching. And I'm going to tell you what Elder Seals told me again the other day what we were studying on. This is the great thing that God had talked about in the cry that he read. We read this. Come out of her, my people. Come out of her that you be not partaker of her sin, her iniquities. And see, this is why we got this stuff going on. Her iniquities have reached the heaven. Now you look at this thing that's going on. Satan don't have the authority to do nothing worldwide. <laughs> when God releases his hand, it ain't no different from where it would have already happened in the Bible. And I say it to you, saints. We have to be together. We got to study together. We got to know all these things so that we can get there. We don't want to march for it, nothing. <laughs> If it's a three-day journey, I still believe it. If we can get there, <laughs> Jonah, John, Jonah was on a three-day journey when he went into Nineveh. But when we got up and he started running, and the Bible said he made it in one day and a half. We praying already that we don't have to go out here in the winter, that this thing don't hit it. We have to leave nowhere in the winter. Pray that we don't have to do nothing on the Sabbath because the people, and what do you say, your flight being allowed in the winter on the Sabbath. It's, we can't make it. I know we can do it in three days. To where we gonna get there? He gonna provide some form of way. We just pray that we don't have to do it. Cause see, on the Sabbath day, and this is the thing where he said, "Pray that your flight be not in the winter on the Sabbath." Why not the Sabbath day? People are gonna be looking for people doing just like what we doing, and if they find us, then mm -hmm. it's only but one thing that they're gonna do for you. Yep. They're gonna try to do to you, mm -hmm. put you to death. Why? Because you broke the law that he set for you. We thank God for you for those that's listening. We're grab out there for that again. We thank God for those that's listening. We pray to God that the word has been a blessing to you. The spirit to fill you. We'll be back Friday night. We'll be back uh, Saturday. If anything changes, uh, Sister Critter will be 
Well, that's not for you all. But we do thank God. We just want to declare and release some blessings in your life. Just because you listen to us on this Sabbath day. I pray that God bless you with the same blessing. And we encourage you all to look into these things. Go back and look at it. Go back and look at the message that was on there last night. We encourage you guys uh, to stick with the word of God. Know the spirit of God. Know every form and every way that it show up. And the way that it manifests itself. We want to just release it in your life. Isaiah 58, and we believe it, Saint. We live by these principles day by day. And if and Paul made a statement, Paul said him being the chief of sinners. God changed him and blessed him. Paul once persecuted the church and then he was over preaching to all and did a wonderful thing. I know he's doing the same thing. Hallelujah. We declare these blessings. Isaiah 58, 13 says. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord. Then you delight yourself in the Lord. And it will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth. He will cause you to ride on the high places of this earth. And feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. He will feed you with the heritage of Jacob thy father. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken for it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Saints, we thank God for you. We release and, and God blessing in your life. Hallelujah. Understanding, wholeness, nothing missing, nothing lacking in your, in your life. We speak God blessing over you. God bless you. God keep you. God be gracious to you. God lift his countenance up on you. God shine upon you. Shalom to you. We love you. Shalom. Thank you.